we want to start today we i want to put this across for us to know where we are coming from which fields which conference which union and uh, uh, we want you to add the initials of your union or your conference to your name so if you are a cm then you add what to it so that as we uh, look through the list we'll be able to identify ourselves and then know where all of us are coming from it is good for us to know ourselves and this is a good platform for us to know who is speaking where is he coming yes. so we will entreat all of you if it's possible you can ring in your your name and then add the initials of your field or your union your conference or your division and then those of us using techno spark a I want to invite Mama Donga Subaya to the commit today's presentation to be Mama, if you can hear me, just unmute your, your microphone and then share a word of prayer with us for us to begin. Mama Donga Subaya. Our Father and our God, we want to bless to him this morning for the opportunity given to us to continue with our program. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your leadership in our lives. We also want to thank you, Lord, today being the first day of the new month. We know that your grace will be sufficient for us as we journey throughout this month. Thank you, Lord, for the ongoing program. You commit this big task today into your hands. Please speak to them. Help all of us to be leaders as we really want us to be, so that you can lead the young ones at your own will by your own power. Strengthen us, forgive us all our sins, make us to be channel of blessing to all the people around us. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, so we are praying. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mama, for this the wonderful prayer you've shared with us. We claim we want to start with the Dr. Ron to do the first presentation. Dr. Ron is, yes, as I introduced him the last time, for the purpose of those who were not known, I will not go through all the profiles. Again, it was the first person who would be in this uh, seminar. 
could hear me from Peru to have you once again. Dr. Ron, we are happy to have you once again. The floor is yours. You need us every day. Thank you. 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 Pastor Alfred, thank you very much for this uh, blessed opportunity to be with your uh, leaders uh, during this um, SYL. And please again, excuse me for uh, not wearing the uh, SYL uniform. I should be wearing it. Uh, again, uh, my my luggage is still out, <laughs> still missing. And hopefully, uh, it, yeah. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, sorry for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Still, when I travel going to Myanmar, I lost it. First time I uh, had an experience. All my best clothes are in there, including my SYL, because I was uh, going there to train uh, our also senior youth leaders over there. And also to show them the uniform. Uh, it was lost with my luggage. Yeah, so uh, this time, um, let me share with you. Um, yeah, the topic is about creative uh, ministry. Or uh, let me just share this with you um, how we can. Uh, lead our young people in creative in ministries. But before I present something that uh, you can consider uh, to help you in your AYM programming, uh, let me just give you uh, a brief introduction uh, with regard to creative ministry. Yes, we want to be creative. Uh, because God gave us, uh, has given us creativity, but um, we need to make sure that the basic ones are there. Like, for example, uh, many times uh, we have activities being done for young people that are uh, that set aside prayer, set aside Bible reading. What, what I mean is uh, because of so many activities. Uh, prayer, Bible reading, and witnessing uh, this main thing in, uh, in the ministry. The basic ones are God. So I think uh, this uh, should be uh, the components of uh, having a creative ministry. So now, uh, please allow me to share with you uh, something that can help you. Uh, although you know we have we have a, a a lecture that you can find in the GC uh, website, but let me share with you this uh, uh, presentation that can help us to uh, have a an AWA program that. Uh, that would be balanced. If you study the, uh, the presentation of the general conference, um, there should be balance in our programming for our young people that caters for physical, for mental, spiritual, and social uh, well-being of our young people. So let me just uh, start with this Let's Worship, an interactive young Let's Worship that uh, and I, I, I'll be like, uh, like to, uh, also get your feedback regarding this. Uh, sometimes um, our highlight, I think the highlight of our worship, I don't know in Africa, uh, usually the highlight is divine worship. And when it is already in the afternoon, uh, seldom we see that uh, people are coming, in, uh, even young people. But uh, how can we have an interactive youth led worship? Uh, that uh, can help our young people to uh, be uh, uh, led to Jesus Christ. Okay, so this concept of led, uh, let's worship. It is a, an interactive youth led worship that uh, we can adapt in our uh, churches, uh, but 
uh, that depends on your uh, preference about this. This is an interactive youth led worship format designed to gear the minds of our brethren, both young and old, for worship, to establish an innovative, relevant, and worshipful Sabbath after service. So, um, although it is Sabbath after worship, we can uh, we can bring uh, the the uh, you know the programming that we have for young people. So, for example, uh, we can have like let's hear for the first Sabbath, and then let's talk for uh, the second Sabbath, and then third Sabbath we can have let's sing, and the fourth Sabbath let's do. So for example, uh, uh, for the let's hear, yeah. So we have this let's hear, let's talk, let's sing, let's do. Uh, and uh, this helps, uh, helps our, our Sabbath, Sabbath uh, AY program. Uh, not, you know, balance, uh, not only uh, uh, emphasizing something uh, at the expense of other things. So let's see again. So for example, let's hear what is, uh, what can we have in let's hear? Listen to Christ-centered, relevant messages every first Sabbath. Again, uh, like uh, the, the objective for, for my first lecture are uh, to lead our young people into a saving relationship with Jesus and bring them to, uh, uh, and, and let them embrace his discipleship. So we want to, to lead them. For example, first stop and listen to Christ Center German. Address them. Okay. So uh, in here you can, for example, use uh, for the Matthias to start with uh, the steps to Christ. Okay, steps to Christ that you can use during the let's hear. And then uh, let's talk uh, into interactive discussion regarding real life issues every second. Here's what uh, uh, Dr. Paco is addressing yeah, mental issues, problems. Uh, during this let's talk, we're going to have a uh, discussion of the life issues, the real life issues in Africa. And uh, we can invite people, elder, or uh, someone who is an expert in our local just to discuss real life issues. Their love life and um, premarital sex and so on and so on. And then let's sing, uh, worship God through praise songs and, uh, and testimonies every third Sabbath of the month. So here uh, we will be discussing it more like praise songs, uh, songs that you love. But this is the thematic one. Uh, and then let's do experience a hands on worship through outreach every fourth Sabbath of the month. So you'll not only have GYD during March, uh, during March, but you'll have it every, every monthly every fourth Sabbath instead of worship begin, you can go out uh, and spend time. Addressing the needs of that community. So here are some, like, like for example, a sample program for the let's hear, welcome remarks, and then icebreaker for 15 minutes, praise time, prayer one minute, testimonies 15 minutes, special number three to five minutes, and speaker. Dirty prayer one day, and then garden of prayer five minutes. Special last song for the let's hear and speak and prayer for the let's hear garden of prayer on special last song. The steam, a pattern of the program, but you can have presentation. For example, you can present about uh, for the let's hear and you can have presentation. 
worship schedule wherein you can have you can uh, plan for for uh, a year on the topic like for june 6 for example let's hear and then praise team and then welcome an icebreaker special music what is the feature overcoming bad habit and then let's talk and then uh, proper grooming and so on and homosexuality for example listening to that so you have the schedule for uh, that week. So uh, this is something and uh, we can uh, have as a creative uh, youth ministry, um, but also creative, a balanced way of, uh, uh, of spending our 52 Sabbaths. We have only 52 Sabbaths that we have. So what, what uh, let's have, let's use the, every Sabbath, uh, a meaningful one to our young. So uh, just uh, that one is only a start of our lecture. Let me just share to you um, uh, the concept that we have for this one. Yeah, so creative youth ministry, thinking outside the box, but upholding. So I added this one, uh, Pastor Alfred. Uh, thinking outside the box, but upholding principles inside the book. So, uh, be creative, but be sure that uh, we are upholding the principles inside the Bible. So, um, like what I've said, um, we need to have uh, assist the local AY leader in the art of relevant creative programming, which uphold Bible principles. And then learn to create a well-balanced program that incorpor incorporates the physical, social, intellectual, and emotional components that assist the youth in building their faith in Jesus. Uh, and then ad adapt the AYM programs to youth without neglecting the key objectives of the youth department as outlined by uh, Kern. So please review again the, the, those objectives um, outlined in the first lecture. Yeah, because Ellen White said, when the youth give their hearts to God, our responsibility for them does not cease. They must be interested in the Lord's work, 
and led to see that he expects them to do something to advance his cause. It is not enough to show how much needs to be done and to urge the youth to act apart. They must be taught how to labor for the master. So we need to yeah, bring the young people to saving relationship with Jesus Christ, build them up uh, using uh, the, the uh, building up in spiritual disciplines, saying, uh, set, uh, train them how to use their spiritual gifts uh, and send them out to fulfill the gospel mission. So we need to train our young people. So they must be trained, disciplined, drilled uh, in the best methods of winning souls to Jesus. Uh, here in uh, the Southern Asia Pacific Division, uh, what we have, at least in context, uh, you can contextualize it, uh, we have 57% of Muslims are here in SSD or throughout the world. We have the biggest, I think, in the world, uh, biggest uh, population of Muslims. So we are now having a Zoom camp on how to train our young people to reach out to their friends, uh, Muslim friends. And uh, yeah, uh, and we are tying up with the AMR, Adventist Muslim Relation so we can train and many young people are interested uh enrolling to this uh, 10 sessions uh, on how to reach muslims because in many places uh, we are losing young people to muslims so how how can we help them so, so we will be teaching them how to reach uh, uh to them and then aym basic uh, program structure so we have fellowship of course if of spirits, sense of participation, involvement, sense of enjoyment, change variety, relevant religion, so that you can uh, and can gain uh, youth-oriented insights into religious beliefs and traditions. See and accept the relevance of religious beliefs and tradition. Understand the relationship between a Christian and the world. Understand the role and mission of the church. Be brought face to face with a realistic representation of God, God's ideal for humankind. There is this quotation that I like from uh, that is that I quote from uh, the conference youth directors uh, manual. We are not called to entertain the youth, but to lead them. So we need to lead them to the mission of the church. And of course, uh, we have the GC Adventist youth uh, ministry yearly thing. Like for example, for the GYD, what was our uh, theme last year? Can you help me? Can you uh, uh, remember what was the GYD last year theme? Yeah, you remember the, the theme for last year? You can type on the chat box. Huh? How about today? What is the uh, theme this year? What is the uh, theme for the GYD? Love is a verb. A verb, okay? okay? Love is a verb. So, yeah, love is a verb. Share. Uh, last year is loving the forgotten. So, uh, of course, not the thing that we have for the general conference from the general conference. And then, if the division, uh, the, the West African division uh, has its own team, we can also adapt it, and uh, also the union until uh, the local church adoption of uh, the. the the programs we have. Yeah, uh, some are just a concept, uh, but the details are being done in the local churches. So we need to be creative on how to adapt these programs that we are having in, in, uh, in, uh, from the general conference in, in, in our Ignite, or expand, or 
So we need to be aware uh, regarding the team, the yearly team of our Nigerian Catholic friends. And then uh, know the various types of AY society meetings, the regular uh, weekly meeting, uh, experience meeting, and evangelistic meetings, rallies, and convention, and uh, other programs that we have in our AY. So congregates, uh, congresses and special programs, such as special programs for youth with the whole church attending, special programs for the promotion of some activity or project, congresses or youth rallies where AY societies from several territories meet together, special programs promoting temperance. Uh, I have this one, you know, um, Seventh-day Adventists are known before to be people who are really advocating uh, against smoking, alcohol, and drugs, right? Uh, but now, I don't know in Africa uh, if still a strong voice against these vices, against smoking, alcohol, and drugs. I think we need to revive this. When I uh, presented a presentation in uh, IAS uh, for Africa, uh, African Theological AATA, uh, I made a, 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 a study regarding uh, Africa and even in South Africa. Uh, the problem of smoking, alcohol, and drugs are also there. And uh, as, as young people, well, as leaders, we need to lead our young people to to uh, be really, you know, up, upholding the temperance movement because this is one of the mission uh, that uh, Luther, Warren, you know, and the the, the the young people during that time were really uh, uh, advocating the temperance movement. We should not lose sight of that. We should be if there are. If there is a group of people who uh, needs to be really strong in advocating against smoking alcohol and drugs, it should be the Seventh-day Adventists because other religions, they, they don't, they, they allow their members to smoke and drink alcohol. But to us, it is uh, embedded in our teachings not to, uh, not to be addicted in you know, this um, vices. So demonstration of conversion training meetings, um, investiture ceremonies. So yeah, later on you will have investiture for SYL and also so so many other activities that we can bring to our young people. So no key five no key, uh, key five basic needs of youth. Yeah. The young people need acceptance and recognition, affection success and achievement, new experiences, security and sense of belonging. Let me stop uh, share, sharing for now. Um, I We are having here in, uh, in SSD, SOYA, State of the Youth Address. Uh, we call it SOYA, State of the Youth Address. And here's the thing. Um, I asked them, we asked them, what are the challenges and problems they are facing as young people? Because we need to be relevant to their needs as well. Uh, yes, we have the, the programs we know uh, we want to do for them and do with them. But uh, do we know their needs as of now? So we tie up with our university, with uh, the Adventist University of the Philippines uh, University Research Center. And uh, when we tie, tie that with them, so that our survey will be uh, will be validated and it will be uh, um, yeah, a source of research as well and sorry um, and, yeah um, and young people uh, have problems with um, mental health and also they have problems with anxieties and several uh, problems they are facing. And uh, one of the question is, where do you go uh, to, uh, for help with regard to your problem? And you know, uh, the top one, where uh, our young people go when they have problems, what do you think? 
any guess where do our young people go when they have problems when they are facing challenges any uh, guess yeah they very good uh, Jane and uh, oh, okay let's see uh, friends to their friends you write friends the top you know the top uh, answer is they 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 are, uh, they are cons uh, consulting their friends and if their friends are not knowledgeable on counseling them uh, they will be led to something and uh, to do something else okay so what what we can do is to yeah, here's the thing uh, what I realize with this is we need to train our 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 young people on how they can counsel how can how they can uh, help their friends face their challenges the next one the, the next one is parents so parents are only second uh, second to the uh, to the group of people they go when they have challenges what's the third one the third one they go to none they go neither to friends nor to uh, to their parents they uh, just uh, uh, consider and face their problems alone and this is something uh, and it is associated also with their uh, with their um, like so many of them would have tried um, committing suicide and if they don't have people you know uh, they cannot open up to their friends so this is really a serious uh, matter to uh, uh, get to, uh, to um, how they handle their uh, problem so um, and another the fourth one you know the fourth one they go to when they have problems are the pastors <laughs> The pastors how many are pastors here how many are pastors here uh, the pastors are only the fourth you know uh, options of our young people to go to when they have problems at least it is in the survey here in ssd and i hope you can also have survey in your uh, in your territory so that you can know uh, the 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 situation of our young people over there so yeah so uh and with this with this soya yeah, i'll be I'll, uh we, i'll be presenting this state of the youth address soon here in ssd this year and it will be one one of our uh you know um, uh, we need this the, the result of the survey in our programming how can we help our young people how can we be relevant to our young people not only feeding them with programs that we have, but also hearing from them. So uh, uh, communication, communication is, you know, two way street, uh, not only one way to listen to them. What are their challenges? What are their position on several of our doctrines? So, yeah, we need to be relevant. And also we can all also do that when we are also uh, like conducting survey to help them. And I know uh, uh, Pastor Alfred uh, has been in IAS, is uh, also uh, exposed to research. Um, but, you know, sometimes we are limited to what we can do. So we can tie up with University Research Center in order for us to uh, know the needs of our young people. So let's go back so, uh, to the lecture. Um, so acceptance and recognition, affection, uh success and achievement new experiences so these are the things that we need to consider when we are planning uh initiatives for our young people yeah success and achievement new experiences security and sense of belonging so again this uh six fundamental aym objectives uh, from current should be uh observed to raise the level of the devotional life of the youth to lift the standard of attainment of the youth, to educate and train youth for service, 
to provide opportunities for outreach and service to teach the principles of stewardship and to discover the youth uh, to, uh, to lead the youth to discover their uh, individual worth and discover their gifts. Now, I have a question to you. Um, how can we creatively uh, promote Bible reading to our young people? Any ideas that you can share? How can we promote effectively uh, the Bible, Bible reading or uh, lead the young people to read the Bible? Any idea, please, uh, uh, you can type on the chat box if you have one. Um, how many chapters do we have in the Bible? Make it audio, yeah? Giving the verse to memorize. Thank you very much, happiness. Uh, and also, Frederick, by reading along with them, yeah? I think being example. That's why, you know, on my Facebook, I really post uh, my reflection daily. It's better to for them to see me reading the Bible than to say to them or read the Bible. Uh, else, Bible games, having Bible clubs where they read daily, Bible gem contests. Uh huh. Yeah, with regard to Bible gem contests, uh, we'll be having like 28 fundamental beliefs here in SSD, and um, yeah, so we can. Um, allow them to study the Bible deeply, yeah. giving them assignments to do, Bible uh, recitation clubs, yeah. How about, uh, so we have, we have 1,189 chapters of the Bible. How about assigning each chapter to uh, 1,189 young people and then allow them to record themselves reading Genesis 1 or um, I started joining the Revival and Reformation uh, by reading Isaiah chapter 11. So, and then I'll be ending up with Isaiah chapter 10. So you can, you know, it's good to support the, the Bible reading of the church, Revival and Reformation. Uh, we just read uh, today Ezra. Okay, we are now in Ezra. So we can start with Ezra, uh, the Bible chapter today. And then um, yeah, start assigning uh, uh, Bible readers. So so many follow the Bible, yeah. Uh, dramatize Bible contents. How about writing the Bible? Uh, for example, this is the Bible uh, has been written by the young people of uh, what? of this division and then you will compile it written by the uh, young people of your division so something like that like uh, you prepare a page you know a uh, um, a band paper with the chap like bible chapter and then the name of the young people and then if we give them part, at least to, to write a chapter of the Bible, maybe they will be encouraged to write the whole Bible. Yeah, so uh, that is one way of promoting Bible reading. But you have so many things, uh, suggestion here, Bible games and others. Uh, yeah, if you are in school, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy for, like, if you are a, a teacher in a school, uh, you can... Um, have it a project okay for this this month our project is to write the book of genesis the next month we'll be writing the book of uh, exodus distributing you know all the chapters to young people and then you target and then uh find the 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 chapters that you have written that they have written and then have a special program you know, they will be attending and then you will uh, have a special program and then show them this is the Bible written by a uh, uh, university, Adventist University of Africa. Oh, uh, you, can, you, can, you can have a wonderful experience for them to write the Bible. Uh, these are activities. Why not, you know, think of ways, creative ways on 
creative youth ministry on the basics of Christianity. How can we lead our young people to a prayerful life, to a diligent study of the Bible? So those are some things. And then thank you very much for these suggestions. I know you have uh, so many ideas uh, in uh, creative ideas in youth ministry. Yeah, let, let me go back to uh, the lecture. Yes, yeah, so, and then uh, servant leader. Uh, let me just uh, um, skip other slides. A six step AY programming aid. So, we have an outline sheet of uh, the AY quarterly uh, yearly calendar. Like what I did, I showed you Let's Worship. So Let's Worship is uh, a way for you to have a balanced uh, programming for our young people. Meet with uh, your AY Society Council and selected youth to plan the yearly calendar. So how about uh, allowing, if you are a pastor, bringing your leaders, your youth leaders in, in a retreat, and then you outline what you would like to do for a year. For this year yeah and for example that let's worship what to, to discuss during first sabbath second sabbath third sabbath and fourth sabbath and even fifth sabbath so uh, you can uh, have this youth council you know prepare this uh, program and then yeah fill in the major division union conference events yeah ay week of prayer and then ay celebration day global youth day and other uh, important events uh, that mention a week, uh, the, the e week uh, of prayer. And then proceed to fill in your local church calendar events. So, after considering the programs, important programs we have from uh, GC division, uh, you can fill in your local church programs and fill the dates, venue, and type of social recreation events. Yeah, so those are the things that you can uh, do, types of AY weekly programs. Yeah, so I do it. Different. So this is uh, just um, emphasizing the training that we can have. Like I do it, they watch. I do it, they help. They do it, I help. They do, I watch. So uh, allowing them to, uh, to be trained on having youth programming. So once you have filled in all the types of meetings you intend then to use in a given quarter, you can brainstorm creative ways to fulfill these objectives in ways that will interest and please your particular youth. But something, you know, we don't always, we should not always uh, feed them with what interest and please them. I think uh, we are not called to entertain the youth, but to lead them. Let's have them. Let's lead them to. Uh, that's the, the what leadership is leading them to what God would like them to be and to go. Yeah. So be sure to plan your quarterly AY program and around the six fundamental AY objectives, and then uh, you may choose three to four fundamental objectives of the AYM each quarter to fulfill and seek to plan in detail at least uh, a quarter at a time. Yeah, like what I showed you already through the uh, Let's Worship. Then post your three-month program on the church. Okay, okay we'll have this Let's Worship uh, uh, for the quarter. And you have interesting topics for first Sabbath, second Sabbath, third Sabbath, and so on. Then be aware, of course, that life can intervene. You know, so many things, circumstances. It may be that some things will change from the original plan, but if this happens, it is not less uh, upsetting than if you had no plan at all. At least having a plan is better than uh, not having a plan at all. Remember to seek approval from the church board. Yeah, of course, try at least one thing per quarter that you never tried before. Then as you plan for the whole year, consider taking into account the holiday seasons. Yeah. It's good to uh, to do retreats during the times that holidays that won't affect their schooling. Try to include training weekends. Yeah, retreat. Seek counsel from those uh, that have passion for youth. Here's the thing: 
uh, let's involve those people who are gifted. Uh, for leaders and pastors, we should not be like uh, be a um, what do you call that? Be uh, insecure uh, about our position. Uh, let's bring those people. You know, we have we have strengths. We have uh, strength, and then they have strength also. But we have weaknesses. For those we are weak, we can tap other people to join us. And if we tap all the strengths of uh, of our uh, young people, we will have a stronger group. But if we are insecure with other others who can give help us. Uh, and we will be afraid uh, will be changed later, you know. Um, um, we will be, you know, uh, we will be limited to our to our weaknesses. So try to, you know, get the strengths of others. Try to, you know, to involve others in your ministry, and then you will work from strength to strength because you are tapping the gifts of others. Yeah, uh, like what uh, our uh, national hero said, um, we are indispensable. We are not this uh, indispensable. We are dispensable. Anyone can replace us. So seek counsel from those that have passion for youth. Build a vibrant youth ministry team uh, is the most important part of creative programming. Yeah, vibrant youth ministry. You know, bringing ideas uh, with you. With, with the young young ideas from your young people and leaders who are uh, have passion for you. Learn to engage your youth in all aspects of programming. I think uh, that's all for uh, the, 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 the lecture. So in short, creative youth ministry, yeah, uphold the biblical principles and do it creatively uh, and, and ask the help of others so you can have a, a youth ministry that is vibrant for God's glory. I hope uh, this lecture uh, has helped you in a way uh, to be creative in your ministry for our young people. I know you have so many bright ideas. Bring them and help uh, Pastor uh, Pastor Alfred in leading uh, the ministry. For uh, don't don't wait uh, for you to become the division director uh, to give uh, your ideas. Give them right now and this time so bright ideas and as leaders we need to open also uh, to to bright ideas from the people that uh, love the youth for god's glory thank you very much pastor Alfred, again i appreciate this time thank you thank you dr ron for this wonderful uh, presentation we are so grateful we still have a few minutes to jump into the next presentation I will allow for a few questions. And so uh, if you have a question, please don't hesitate. Just raise your hand using the the, the hand raise uh, button. Uh, I will see it and then I will recognize you and give you the floor to ask your question. Or better still, you can drop your questions in the chat room. I will read them and they will be answered. So please, if you have any contribution, any question, if you want to add, you can do so. If it's question, you can do so. Either you drop them in the chat room, or you can also raise your hand and you will the floor to do so. Any question? There is a question. There is a All question, right. Pastor. OK. In the, in the chat room? Okay, let me read it quickly. Uh, okay, please, how do you constitute AYM Council? All right, I think uh, this doesn't necessarily relate to the topic, but I don't yeah. know if I still want to share something on it yeah. otherwise. Okay, so it depends on the context here. Uh, if it is in SSD, AYM yes. Council uh, uh, in the division level, uh, what constitute the AYM Council are the youth directors of the union. Yeah, yes. the levels of union, the youth directors of uh, as, uh, of the conferences and mission. So it depends on the context. Yeah. 
So um, thank you for that question. But yes, as uh, Dr. Rod said, uh, it varies. It is not the same everywhere. But if it's for the local church, it is right there in the church manual. So if you visit the church manual, it will tell you uh, how or what constitutes the AY council in the local church. But for the division level, even at the union level, it varies. So uh, check from the manual for the local one. That one, the GC has specified it. All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, the next question, I think that's all. That's all. So um, since there are no further questions, I think we will quickly move to the second presentation. Uh, so Dr. Ron, we are grateful. We really appreciate your service to us. And um, we thank you for the knowledge you have impacted to us. God bless you. Please, we have more time to please, engage you to do more. Please allow me to, in, to invite you as well here in SSD. Oh, yes. <laughs> I invite you to thank you. It's okay. I, will, I am always available for you. Okay. Bye -bye. All right. I know you love me. Yes. <laughs> okay. Bye -bye. All right. Thank you. All right. So we have our next presentation, which is going to be led by my former boss and the former youth director of our division, Dr. Uh, Elem Sugochuku, who is now the <laughs> uh, doc, uh, Dr. Ron is waving, Pastor Elems. Yes, I can see you. Thank you, Ron. <laughs> Elems. Ron. So, Pastor Elems uh, used to be the youth director for the division. Now he's in charge of campus ministries and the chaplaincy. He is doing the next presentation on mentoring. He has written a book on that, and he has a vast knowledge as far as mentoring is concerned. And so we are lucky to have him with the vast experience he has in the area. I believe that he's going to bring a lot on board to inform us as to how we can engage our young people, mentor them, and prepare them for mission. So without much I do, he prefers me to just mention his name and then what he's doing now. I wanted to have more uh, about him so I can tell you, but he prefers that I introduce him as Pastor Dr. Elems, the PCM and the Chaplaincy Director and the former Youth Director for our great division. Pastor Elems, you are welcome as you have with us all through. We have our youth leaders, we have our ward workers, and then we have all the youth leaders, pastors from across the division. They are here ready to listen to you. So, Pastor, you have the floor. And we thank you for joining us. Thank you, uh, Pastor Sam. Uh, one moment. Thank you, Pastor SM, for that intro. I am grateful to be here and to uh, continue to be a part of the youth ministries in uh, West Central Africa Division and uh, wherever the Lord gives the opportunity. And I want to thank you for the introduction, even though I didn't say <laughs> to call, uh, introduce me as Pastor Doctor. But anyway, it's um, an experience have acquired by hard work. So thank you and uh, God bless you. Uh, today we will be considering the issue mentoring ownership and empowerment in youth ministries. Mentoring, ownership and empowerment in youth ministries. I would want to uh, begin by asking us a question which I would like you to respond just as say yes or no if you have ever been mentored I want to see your responses to that question okay I see three yeses I see more three four yes uh, yes 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 
Oh, somebody says no. That's interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. You see, uh, one thing we will discover as we go through our presentation for this time is that uh, we have all been mentored and we are still being mentored. Uh, let me say that uh, mentoring is it's like education. You never stop having the experience. Even as uh, youth leaders, we are also mentored. And it will interest you to know that we are not only mentored by our superiors, but we are also mentored by the people we lead because we learn in that process of uh, mentoring. Whether you are a mentee or you are a mentor, we all grow, we all learn in that process of uh, mentoring. Uh, we would come to that and you would see that uh, we have all uh, been mentored at one time or the other. Now, let's take a look at the objectives of this presentation. Number one is to underscore the importance of giving people opportunity to involve or to be involved in all aspects of church life. And then number two is to show the scriptural basis for involving young people in church development. And of course, the number three, know how best to involve our young people for optimal results. So these are the things we would want to accomplish in the next um, hour that we would be looking at this issue of mentoring so why don't we ask the lord to uh, bless our time together at this point let us pray heavenly father we thank you for this moment uh, please teach us and help us to achieve these objectives that we have set before us for this moment in jesus name we pray amen so mentoring ownership and um, introduction i mean uh, this will be the table of contents that we will be looking at in this uh, presentation um we'll look at the introduction we'll look at mentoring we'll look at some mentoring nuggets and then we will draw a conclusion on all that we would have done let's take a look at some statistics on uh, mentoring it will interest you to uh, know that more, I mean, women are more likely a mentor. A research conducted shows that women are 54 times more likely to have mentors uh, compared to men that uh, stands at 48%. Uh, several factors could be responsible for this. Perhaps sometime, you know, as men, we feel we are strong, we can handle so many things on our own. Uh, but for whatever reasons, the women are more prone to being uh, mentored. And then if you take a look at the next uh, statistics there, it says 37% of professionals have a mentor. And then 97 of individuals with a mentor feel they are highly impactful and valuable. In other words, one of the things mentoring does to us is to give us that sense of confidence in what we do because we have learned from some other persons of uh, more and vast experience than we do. And then 89% of individuals mentored will mentor someone in the future. You know, uh, it's like you cannot but also share what you have received as a mentee uh, with that come your way. In fact, it is what Jesus was saying when he commissioned us in Matthew chapter 28. He says, go and make disciples of all nations. And you know, from that context, we understand discipleship too as, you know, a, a disciple as one who makes other disciples. Um, the same applies uh, uh, to mentoring. A recent study showed that 25% of employees who are part of a mentoring program had salary increase in their, I mean, in comparison 
to the five percent who didn't participate in other words you learn something in the process of mentoring that you would not have known or heard or experienced if you did not go through the, the process and then 87 percent of mentors and mentees say that their mentoring relationship make them feel empowered and assist them to develop a more prominent sense of confidence in oh uh, yes this one is very true of mentoring experience it gives you that self-confidence now take a look at this one it says mentees are five times more likely to be promoted than those without a mentor and of course the rationale is very simple the mentee has learned from the mentor to avoid some mistakes that ordinarily he, he or she would have made. And so that gives an edge to the one who has been mentored as opposed to the one who has not. Almost one quarter, about 24% of uh, 46 to 64 claimed they would only return to the office for in-person mentorship or coaching this is what god said to the children of israel through his servant moses he said oh israel the lord our god the lord is one you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and these words which i command you today shall be in your heart and you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit down in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your heart, on your gates. Friends, what God is saying to the children of Israel here is that mentoring is a lifelong, all-encompassing experience. We mentor our young people everywhere, any day. As long as we are in contact with them, we are in that process of mentoring. It's not something we do during the AY program or something we do in church or something we do at home it is something that happens all the time as we see in this context and you would notice that god told the children of israel you will do it diligently in other words there should i mean there has to be intentionality in uh, mentoring our young people this is uh the express word of God to the children of Israel. And you know it's interesting that the children of Israel read this text every day in a typical Jewish home, just to remind them and to underscore the importance of this uh, counsel of the Lord. So what really is mentoring? It's a deliberate, exclusive, rigorous, vulnerable relationship between a mentor and mentee or mentees, in which case the mentor seeks to inspire, empower, and release the mentees towards accomplishing uh, their God-given purpose for their lives and for others. Now you will notice some key words right away. Uh, it is deliberate. It's not something that happens... Uh, you know, by chance or by coincidence. No, it is deliberate. You meditate, you plan, you 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 strategize, and you put everything to make it work. It is exclusive. It is exclusive. Right? It is exclusive, it is rigorous, it is vulnerable, 
And of course, the goal is to inspire the mentee. In other words, in a mentoring relationship, the mentee's interest and uh, needs is the focus of uh, the experience. And one of the things the mentor wants to achieve is to help the mentor, I mean the mentee, to uh, develop or her God-giving uh, uh, so that that person will be engaged in ministry. Uh, we must understand that all our young people that we see, whether in the local church, in the campuses, wherever we are called to serve the young people or to work with the young people, we must remember that they have talents. They have potentials, sometimes that we don't have. So we want to help them to develop those potentials uh, so that they would grow and, in fact, take over from us. Uh, Pastor Ron just mentioned that we should not be threatened by those that we, we lead, by our young people. Uh, I want to underscore that, that in fact, in mentorship, I mean, in mentoring relationship, every mentor is delighted to see their mentee take over from them and carry on in the mission. Now, why should we mentor anyhow? Scriptures, we find biblical foundations for which we have to be engaged in the business of mentoring. Number one is that uh, humans were created to mentor. You know, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God says, uh, uh, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. In other words, man was created to learn from God. Man was created to grow in the image of God. There was a learning experience, and of course, there was also accountability. Of course, uh, we mentor to raise a generation that will carry on the legacy of proclaiming the everlasting gospel. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, the apostle wrote to his uh, beloved son, Timothy, he said, which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. So you see here, right away, the apostle is uh, informing Timothy that, look, your, your duty is to uh, empower the next generation. You are not called to, as a youth leader, to be the do-it-all and everybody is watching you all the time. But you have to also empower all those uh, people that you lead so that they too will uh, take over and the, the, the workforce will be increased. Because, by the way, if you are working alone, then you limit uh, the potential of the team. Uh, if you go to John chapter 4, you will notice that the Bible says soon after Jesus began his ministry, he had baptized more, I mean, he made more disciples, he baptized more people than John the Baptist. And what was the reason? It was simple. The Bible there tells us that Jesus did not baptize himself, but what Jesus did was to train his disciples and uh, commission them to do the baptism so that instead of you know just baptizing one person i mean baptizing as one person now 12 persons were doing the baptism and so he multiplied his efficiency by 12. and that's one of the things that happens when we engage in mentoring mentoring is a command to all believers in christ jesus said to uh, his disciples follow me and I will make you fishers of men, Matthew 4, 19. So from the beginning, it was clear that our mission as a church is not to just come every Sabbath, sing some song, give offering, and talk some things. No, our mission is to go and make other disciples. And one of those ways to accomplish that is to mentor. The human family structure is designed to foster mentoring. Again, we refer to that text in Deuteronomy chapter 6. 
verses 4 through 9. Um, beginning with Adam and Eve, you'll see that they looked up to God as a mentor, and when they had children, God said to them, uh, be an example to your children so that they too will learn from you the things that you have learned from me. What about uh, mentoring young people? Because here we are talking about uh, youth leaders and working with young people. Um, so why should we mentor young people after all? Why not go mentor the old, the children and so on? Now let's take a look at the scriptures again to get our basis. Psalm number 145 verse 4 says, One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. In other words, uh, the Bible is saying that through mentoring, we preserve the posterity of the fear of God as we declare the goodness of God to uh, the succeeding generation in that way. Um, we preserve posterity in the fear of God. Of course, young people are pliable. Proverbs 2, 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So we need to invest in our young people, uh, no matter what it costs. And of course, mentoring is a painstaking uh, experience. We also mentor young people so that we will develop the next generation. Uh, Psalm 144, 12 says that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as pillars sculptured in palace style. Again, here the Bible is telling us that uh, we have to grow, we have to develop the next generation, uh, specifically the young people. Young people are strong. As we know, young people are always strong. Um, the Apostle uh, Peter, sorry, the Apostle John wrote uh, in 1 John chapter 2, uh, the last part of um, 1 John chapter 2, verse 14, he says, I have written to you young men, and of course, young women inclusive here, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. Young people are full of strength and we need to tap into that energy uh, for the finishing of the work of the gospel. Let me also say that mentoring is the divine strategy for fulfilling the I will go mission that is our focus for this quinquennium. You know that the, 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 in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, the Bible says, uh, go and make disciples of all nations. Go and make disciples. That, in effect, is Jesus saying to us to go and mentor disciples of every nation to, to teach and to uh, lead our young people uh, to the throne of grace. So that as we mentor, we are actually fulfilling uh, the gospel commission. Now, let me ask you this question at this point again, before we proceed. What structures do you see in the local church for mentoring young people? Do we have any structure in the church um, for mentoring our young people. What structure do you see in the church? I want to get your responses. What structure do you see in the church for mentoring young people? Let me look. All right, I see the AYM. Somebody says that is true. What else? AWM. Yes. All right. Okay, thank you very much. I think we have the idea. But let's take a look at this. Let me say that the Seventh-day Adventist Church has 
five basic structures for mentoring our young people. Um, the first structure there is what we refer to as the Adventurer Club. The Adventurer Club. Here we are mentoring our young people ages four through nine. In this case, the home, church, the school all collaborate to grow our precious little ones ages four through nine. And then we have uh, this other structure we call the Pathfinder Club, uh, which is to mentor our children ages 10 through 15. Again, here the parents and the church we collaborate to uh, nurture our young people uh, for the kingdom. Then we have the ambassador club, which is a mentoring structure of early young adults between ages uh, 16 to 21. Um, we, we challenge and train them in discipleship, leadership, and service uh, to mankind. And then we have another structure, which is uh, the Young Adult Club, which is a mentoring structure for young people, uh, adults ages 16 through 30, uh, that challenges and trains them for discipleship, leadership, and service to mankind. And again, we have another structure referred to as the Public Campus Ministries, which is a mentoring structure for our Adventist students in the uh, public uh, campuses of learning and even in some of our uh, Adventist uh, institutions of learning. So in these uh, uh, five structures, we, we, we mentor our young people. We have um, well-defined curriculum that have uh, been tested over the years and that are very beneficial uh, to our young people, which is why as lead, I mean youth leaders, we need to acquaint ourselves with all of these structures in the youth uh, ministries and the public campus, because these are the structures that we use to develop and to mentor our young people. Uh, you must spend time to to, to go into the details of these various structures. It, uh, in, I mean, each of these structures has a broad spectrum of uh, curriculum that encompasses, I mean, every aspect of life. Uh, let me say that in the youth ministries, we talk about stewardship, we talk about um, relationship with pastors, we talk about um, sub the aspects of church life and ministry. In fact, in the young adult and ambassador ministry, we also talk about vocational life. We talk about um, um, other aspects of uh, life beyond uh, church life. So um, it's a place for our young people. We must always give them uh, opportunity to experience. There are some benefits uh, that we can derive when we engage in this process of mentoring. Uh, number one is that it will provide rightly trained leaders for church, uh, for the church of today and tomorrow. You know, as we mentor the young people, we are not just uh, mentoring leaders for tomorrow, but we are in fact mentoring leaders that will uh, take. Uh, they are rightful place in the church of today and so uh, for tomorrow. And in fact, um, we must uh, do all that we can to have young people in our churches because uh, the young people bring life and dynamics uh, to any group that they find themselves. Number two is it aids in checking the rising global threat to church and pastoral leadership, which is a rapid exit of our young people. When we mentor young people, they, they feel a sense of belonging. They don't want to leave the community. They, they want to contribute their part. And in that process, they are retained. Uh, if you take a look at uh, places where there have been challenged with having young people in the churches, 
you will notice that there are places where the young people are made inactive. The young people become like spectators in the church. The older ones are doing all the things. They don't trust the young people enough to do certain things. And before long, the young people feel that, well, my presence is not very uh, critical to this group. And so they look for other places where they will be valued and they will be integrated. It provides opportunities for mentors to shape the next generation. Uh, when we mentor, we are not just uh, mentoring one person, but we are actually shaping the next. Young people better resonate with Christ's command to his uh, followers to love their neighbors as themselves and his command to go into the entire world and make disciples of every nation. Let me uh, quickly make this a simple pastoral observation that I have had over the years. Perhaps it will be the same for you if you can reflect. You will notice that in all of our evangelistic activities, the young people play prominent role, whether it's in the area of um, inviting friends and um, even uh, proclaiming the, the, the word, which of course is responsible for the fact that we, if you look at our baptism, we baptize more of the young people because uh, they do most, uh, most of the reaching out. And of course, they reach out to their friends. And uh, in that process, we get to have more baptism among the young people. Number five is that it affords mentees healthy environment to develop their spiritual gifts and potential. You know, in mentoring, we are not out to condemn, but we are out to support, to encourage, to build our mentees to discover their God's giving uh, talent. And so we, we are not out there to condemn them, with, but we are there to develop them. Uh, they are happy and they want to grow in that kind of uh, environment. It is customized, uh, number six, it is customized to the needs of the mentee and is flexible. Uh, here you see there is no one method or one principle that will fit all the time in the same way. Uh, in mentoring, we focus on the need of our mentee, our mentees. And so it is not something we take the way it is exactly done in uh, maybe Eastern Sahel Union will be the way it must be done in Northern Nigeria. No. We look at the context, we look at the need of the, uh, the mentee, and then you walk from that context. Number seven is that it is an effective means of advancing the gospel via multiplication of leaders. You know, when you mentor, you are actually developing a leader, not just a follower. And so, um, by so doing, the gospel multiplies at a very exponential rate in that uh, you are producing leaders, people who can move and so that uh, the more uh, people we mentor, the faster the gospel will grow because now we have many leaders, people who know what to do and who are motivated to do the right thing. And so the work moves much, much faster. Let's take a look at some mentoring nuggets for mentors. Um, um, the number one here is that God is the mentor whom um, all mentors, not, and that's a mistake here, this should be all, to whom all mentors go for help. Here, as a mentor, you recognize that you are not all in all. Your mentee is not meant to be like you, but your mentee is pointed to God who himself is the true and a supreme mentor of all the human race. Remember, in Genesis 1, verse 26, it says, let's make man in our image. So we are pointing our mentees to God, not to ourselves, because we are all humans created to be uh, like God, in the image of God. And that's where we are headed and not to ourselves. So a true mentor would not focus on himself, make their mentors to 
uh, talk like them, do things like them in every sense. No, you want to lead them to God and to discover themselves. Another nugget for mentors is uh, you spend time with God. Uh, of course, we cannot overemphasize this. There is nothing that can replace our time. You know, Jesus would say, a good man out of his good treasure brings forth good gifts. Invariably, the evil man out of his evil treasure brings evil gifts. In other words, you can only give what you have in you. You cannot give what you don't have. So if you spend time with God, from that rich experience with God, you will impact the life of your mentees. Now, mentoring is a way of life. Just be yourself. Depend on God to overcome your personal weaknesses. Never try to be like another person. However successful or influential that person may be, you cannot be the next person. So be yourself. Be yourself. And if there is one thing we must teach our young people is not to be reflectors. Ellen White would say that we should not be reflectors of other people's knowledge. But we should be ourselves. We should go to the source of knowledge, and that is to God himself, and learn and uh, be who we have been called to be. Of course, another thing for mentors is that you have to learn to be vulnerable. Uh, none of us is uh, a superhuman. None of us is an angel. We need to re recognize that we are all weak, we are all subject to failure and mistakes and all that so that when our, uh, as we deal with our mentees, we don't present ourselves as, you know, superhuman beings who don't have any mistake and expect them to be like that when it is really not possible. So we need to be vulnerable to share our weaknesses, our strength, and then they would know that, yes, if um, my mentor... Uh, has all these weaknesses and is still striving, then I too can make it. Uh, be an example for your mentee. Uh, the Apostle Paul will say, imitate me as I imitate Christ. We must, as mentors, be example. And of course, we need to spend time with our mentees. Uh, we grow together with them in uh, a healthy relationship. And then we get on the job with them. Uh, don't always be the one doing things. Let them do it, you know, uh, for the most part. In fact, your job as a mentor is to teach the mentee how to do it. And when the mentee has learned to do it, you observe the mentee. Uh, or, I mean, you, 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 you do it with the mentee. And then the next stage, you observe the mentee doing it. And from that point, you empower the mentee to go on. And that's what Jesus did in John chapter 4, which made him baptize more disciples than John the Baptist in such a short time of his uh, ministry. So uh, get on the job with your mentees and let them know what to do, and it will uh, flourish your ministry. And then for the mentees, here are some nuggets helpful tips for you humility is crucial it's critical uh, uh, as a mentee if you are not humble you will not learn enough from your mentor because you will think you know better than your mentor and in the process you might not learn some critical things that you would have learned to help you as you go on your own journey so humility is very important the next is to follow through on the pieces of instruction from your mentor uh, don't think you are too wise to you know to design or to uh, do things your own way but learn learn because your mentor has been through uh, that way uh, previously and maybe your mentor has made some mistakes and has learned from those mistakes and by copying or following through on the instructions of your mentor, then you will avoid that mistake and still accomplish 
uh, the goal. Number three is never consider yourself to be wiser or more knowledgeable than your mentor. Very important. Because when you do that, uh, you set up yourself for uh, not learning at all. By way of conclusion, I want to go back to the spirit of prophecy writings and look at what Ellen White says, you know, about uh, mentoring young people. In the book, Pastoral Ministry, page 275, she says, and I quote, very much has been lost very much has been lost to the cause of God because of inattention to the young. Ministers of the gospel should form a happy acquaintance with the youth of their congregations. You know, what Ellen White here is saying is very obvious. We are losing so much in the church today when we underuse our young people. And you know, what even makes it stronger today for us is that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is, to a larger percent, a young people church. And so if we decide to, to play down on these young people, to not use them, then we are underutilizing a greater pot uh, potential of the church. And that's what Ellen White is saying uh, to us in the book, Pastoral Ministry. So let's get in the business of uh, involving our young people in the mission of the church. And then again, from the book, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 6, uh, page 435, she says, and I quote again, let not the youth be ignored. Let them share in the labors and responsibility. Let them feel they are part of the act in helping and blessing others. Don't ignore our young people. Don't ignore them. Give them opportunity to serve in the house of God. Give them opportunity to preach. Give them opportunity to teach. Give them opportunity to sing. Give them opportunity to witness. In fact, she is saying, get them involved in every aspect of the church life. Young people are very important to the church. Again, in the book, uh, Christian Education, page 206, she goes further to say, we must manifest confidence in our young men. They should be pioneers in every enterprise involving toil and sacrifice, while the overtaxed servants of God should be cherished as counselors to encourage and bless those who strike the heaviest blows for God. Now, you see, what Ellen White is here is saying is we need to understand that these young people are full of strength, like uh, John would say. Uh, I write to you, young men, because you are strong. They have the strength. So she's saying that uh, the older ones should uh, accommodate the younger ones and use them to enter the frontiers. Those places where the work is difficult and calls for greater sacrifice, the older ones should send the younger ones to go and break those grounds with their youthful strength, while the older ones will serve them as cancer loss. So if we put it the other way around and the old people are going in the front, then uh, we would not accomplish so much. Ellen White is warning and advising and admonishing us to you know, put our young people in the forefronts of the ministry, in the frontiers where the work is much, much difficult because they have the strength to deal with all the, the troubles that would come on their way. Then in the book, Gospel Workers, page 209, she goes again to say, we should seek to enter into the feelings of the youth, sympathizing with them in their joys and sorrows their conflicts and their victories. Jesus did not remain in heaven, away from the surrounding and sinful. He came down to this world that he might become acquainted with the weakness, the suffering, and the temptations of the fallen grace. Friends, as uh, leaders in the Adventist youth ministries and public campus ministries, we have 
the responsibility to um, give our young people the, 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 that sense of um, uh, that, that sense of being with them in their joys, in their sorrows, in their conflict, in their troubles, so that you know, by so doing, they would be more uh, encouraged to press on and to fight this race uh, even uh, to the end. But again, in the book, Messages to Young People, she says, and I want to put her once again, God wants the youth to become men of earnest mind, to be prepared for action in his noble work and fitted to bear responsibilities. Uh, this is how much God desires to use the young people, and we can do no less as youth leaders, as church leaders, as pastors, as directors. We have to give these young people opportunity to be what God wants them to be. And finally, I want to read from uh, two passages of the Apostle Paul's uh, writings to Timothy. The first one is in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. And then the second one is in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 1 to 5. And he says, Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, the way you talk, in your conduct, the way you behave, in your love, the way you, you relate with other people, in your faith, the way you take the word of God, in purity, the way you, you, you live out the word of God in your daily life. Devote yourself, he says, to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have. You then, my child, he says, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses in trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ. No soldier gets entangled in the in civilian pursuit since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. May the Lord be with us as we uh, seek to empower our young people through uh, this process of mentoring them for mission in this life and also in the life to come. I will pause at this point uh, to allow you to ask questions. Uh, this presentation will be made available to uh, Pastor Siem so that um, it will be shared with everyone uh, in the uh, appropriate uh, platform that he has created. So thank you. You can get more information from the gcyouthministries.org, from uh, pcmwad.org, from wadyouth.org, and uh, you can also check out the book, Mentoring Young People, Theology, Prospect, Challenges by Elims. Uh, it's there on Amazon, and um, you can also get some uh, copies from uh, some of the uh, ABCs uh, out there. Thank you, and uh, God bless you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Elims, for this presentation. Um, we, we are now going to ask for a lot of questions. And so uh, if you have questions, please, you can raise your hand or you can drop your question in the chat room. Uh, so we are waiting for that. But whilst we wait, I will ask Pastor Lives to uh, please um, stop sharing so that I can share some information that I will thank you. I have seen one, two hands, right? Um, uh, Josh Aguado, please, from you to let's hear you. All right, uh, Pastor, thank you. Uh, I also want to thank Doc for the beautiful presentation and the impact he has made in our lives. Uh, indeed, 
mentorship in our church is very important. And as I look through the curriculum of the youth ministry, just as he outlined, I see that the content is so much so that it is enough to train our youth. But uh, my question is that uh, he mentioned that the purpose of it is to retain the youth and the young people in the church. But now it seems as though most of the young people are leaving the church. So is it that we are not doing it well, or the approach is not good, or we are not doing it at all? All right, thank you, uh, Josh, for that question. Um, you see, to answer that question would uh, vary from place to place. Uh, what may be causing some young people to live in one particular context may be different than uh, what is doing, uh, causing them to live in another context. But uh, the point here, like you rightly said, we have good resources that uh, can help us develop our young people, not only to uh, nurture them, but to also empower them to reach out to their friends out there who have not experienced Christ in their lives, which of course, you know that this is the basis uh, on which the youth ministries began with Luther Warren and uh, uh, Harry Fena. So uh, it was just about reaching out to their friends. And so, um, one of the things we have discovered and that continues to happen is that when we don't engage our young people enough in the church, and you know, it's a, it's a human natural re response. If you find yourself in a community of uh, people and uh, you notice that, you know, nobody cares about you, Nobody is giving you opportunity to do some things to give you a sense of belonging. Then you begin to lose interest in that group naturally. And that's uh, for the most part, one of the reasons our young people are tending to leave the church. Uh, but we are saying let's become intentional, especially as youth leaders to involve our young people and to talk to our colleagues, those of us who are pastors and elders, talk to your colleagues, find ways to involve the young people. Uh, you know, nothing wrong. In fact, in my local church, um, we, 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 we design our worship in such a way there are times we give the children to preach, there are times we give the, the, the young people to preach and different groups. So, everybody gets to have a sense of belonging in the church and um, the more we do such the more we, we retain them and that's what happens also with the public campus ministries which is why we are investing and we want to do more in public campus ministries because we have noticed that our young people who are part of the uh, public campus ministries, whether it's uh, NAS or NAS or whatever we call it, ESF in the uh, particular unions, you will notice that those students who engage in public campus ministries, they tend to stay in the church even after they graduate because uh, by that experience, they have been nurtured, they have come to have a sense of ownership of the church and uh, belonging that they don't yes. want to detach anymore so um, that is one of the things we recommend uh, for all of us as youth leaders for all of us as pastors elders do all you can to give the young people opportunities as much as you can for them to function in the church and of course you see you could recall i read a number of ellen white's writing she has so many you know, so many calling us to give these young people opportunity to be involved in a church life because when we do so they are more likely to remain in the church and to become the pillars that will okay. finish the gospel okay. so what thank you what thank you to add a little to that i think uh, it is true we have a, a vibrant and well-structured ministry for our young people but the problem has to do with involvement and engagement. In fact, if you go to most of our local churches, you realize that 
the entire department is left to the hand of one young leader. Nobody prepares, nobody supervises, nobody is involved. Our leaders, especially pastors, elders, as to what is happening with the young people, we don't seem to care. We are not giving it a priority. So sometimes these leaders struggle uh, even to get money and some resources to be able to run a vibrant ministry is a challenge. So until we put all our uh, strength to supporting this ministry of our young people, we will have a well-structured ministry, but it will not have impact on our young people. So we have to prioritize and give it a special attention to make sure what is happening are they using the right uh, uh, structure that is in place to educate and also to help our young people to grow? Are we having the mentorship that they need to have? So it is about time we as leaders, as pastors and elders, we focus much on this ministry so that we will be able to use what is there, the structure that has been created to help our young people to grow. Uh, thank you very much for this. I will see uh, hands up. Uh, let me see the chat. Uh, Pastor, please, I'm there, but I'm still, I'm not able to locate the present. Okay. All right. Uh, for tomorrow, we will have this as our presenters. We are going to have the GC director in charge of senior youth, the associate director in charge of senior youth, uh, Pastor Dr. Paco Mangwani, and then we will have our executive secretary, Pastor Dr. Salam Sansu. Sesu. He will talk on digital ministry, maximizing opportunities offered by social media while circumventing its husbands. He has written his PhD, I mean, his dissertation project was on social media. So he's coming with a lot of uh, stuff for, for us. And then uh, Paco will look at the church planning, developing a purpose-driven model for youth ministry in local churches. So don't miss tomorrow. Tomorrow is another day, and I know the Lord is going to use them to bless us. Somebody also asked, um, all the presentations are on the youth website, but some are saying when they go there, they don't see it. I want to quickly uh, share something with you. If you go to the website, the youth uh, website, you go to resources, you click on manuals, and you have all the materials. So as you can see, these are the materials, the introduction, youth development, the need for specialized ministry, leadership, mentoring, church planning. The ones we are even here to have, we have uploaded all of them. And so please go there and get all the materials and some other resources that will help your young people in your local churches. All of them are there. So visit the youth website. I have put the, the website name on the chat room, please get it and download the materials. I also want to uh, inform you that we are ending this presentation on Friday, uh, 11 to 12, which we will have uh, the GC director to do his final presentation, which will be on Friday. Uh, so take note of that. He will talk about issues current issues affecting young people and how we can help them to be able to manage the situation and still remain in the church and be uh, of service to our church and to humanity. So don't mix it. We have a, a one assignment for all of you and we will need you to help us. If you check the uh, the assignment well, you will see that uh, the last one is youth outreach, comprehensive evangelism. We want you to send us a, a small write-up on this. How can we use our youth to reach out to people? We want to assemble these ideas 
and then put it together as we can use it to help our young people to also reach out to mission the focus now is on mission how do we use our young people to reach out to their friends their colleagues and their communities in which they live so it is an assignment to all of us youth outreach comprehensive evangelism i'm sure the lord has put something on your heart share it with us and share it through the the email i have provided the cma at word.adventist.org how can we use our young people to evangelize i'm sure you are using uh, a strategy a plan that is helping in your church in your in your conference in your mission in your union you want to share with us we need to hear or know what the lord has put on your heart so youth outreach comprehensive evangelism it is our assignment and we believe that by the time we finish you will send us something that can help us to uh, develop a strategy that we can use within our division to mobilize our young people to do mission so that is the announcement uh, since we do not have further questions we want to close and we want first, to just okay. to say that i have posted my presentation on the uh, chat you can okay okay pick up from there all right thank you thank and you i sent much. you a copy so that you can also, also you will upload, upload that one as well we are grateful uh pastor lens for allowing yourself to be used this afternoon to impact knowledge to us as leaders i'm sure this is going to help us mentorship is the key we have to train generational leaders and if the young people are the ones that are forming our church membership then we need to pay uh, proper attention to them we should involve them in all decision making in leadership and in all aspects of the church life that is the way to go and we can do that when we pay proper attention to the department in our local churches and support them to be able to train them in the way they should grow so that as they grow they grow to become part of the church and they grow to become leaders to continue the good work our uh, daddies and mamas are doing in the various local churches we want to thank you for making time to be with us today and we want to assure you that the lord is going to be with all of us until we meet tomorrow to continue i want to invite someone to pray and then close us and i'm going to invite olajide john from nigeria is a youth director for one of the conferences in nigeria if he's on i can see him but i don't know if you are there olaji day john you can pray with us otherwise if he's not there then let me uh, choose another person to pray and close us i don't know if elder bakari our communication director can hear me then i will uh, request him to pray and uh, the last prayer to close us elder bakari thank you let us pray lord we want to thank you for this opportunity of listening to your precious teachings as you have gathered us we pray that you help us dwell in your presence and uh, assimilate of these important lessons that we have learned today. May you be our mentor for each and every one, so that in our turn, Lord, we will be mentors for others. We pray that you bless us and that you bless our activities for today and the youth ministries everywhere in the world and particularly the Central Africa Division. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank, you. Thank amen. you for coming. God bless you. Our uh, regards to your families, your uh, colleagues, and everyone. Tomorrow, God willing, we will meet again. Bye-bye.